Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To sum me in peace out to the rest of you. Um, you know who it is, what I'm going to ask you to do, and why I'm going to ask you to do it. Also, a shout out to the uh, subscriber, El Habahi. Um, all right, gentlemen. Um, I'm going to follow advice, and I'm not going to address the ladies in this one. Assalamu alaikum, blood. Okay, for Alhamdulillah, I can't complain. They wouldn't listen if we did anyway, right? Uh, this message is going to be um, addressed to the men, but it is, of course, about the ladies. And it's about something that they're going to say. Um, some of you are in a stage when you still have to engage ladies in these discussions in real life. Um, I've moved past that. I, I live in a nation wherein uh, my contact with women is limited to neighbors uh, and my wife and that, that's fine um, but many of you of course you, you live in societies where you're always in the same spaces spaces in each other's faces and you wind up having to have these discussions so I'm going to go ahead and tell you one of the things you'll have to say if they choose to engage you and you choose to respond you may even have to tell this to your daughters First thing is this, if you wind up poor, pray to God that you have daughters. If you wind up wealthy, pray to God that you have sons. The reason for that is very simple. A poor woman can still marry. Her poverty is not a reason for her to not marry. A wealthy man can marry. And I'm not even talking about marrying in the West. Scrap that, but they can still marry. If you are poor and you have sons and your sons are poor, that's going to hold them back. If you are wealthy and you have daughters and then they retain that wealth, uh, they're not going to find husbands. It's like Jordan Peterson said, and that's how hypergamy works. But understand this, when women, and go ahead and tell this to women too when they start bringing up the subject. And when women uh, start to respond, you say to them, wait. They're gonna say, well, that's because you men get intimidated by a woman's success and resources. And stop them and say, there's not a man around here that hates a woman, that hates a wealthy woman because of the wealth itself. Women hate poor men and hate to be with poor men because of the poverty itself. And granted, everyone hates poverty, but the woman will hate the man because of the poverty, whereas the man does not walk around hating wealthy women because of the wealth. They only have a problem with wealthy women when they learn how wealthy women are going to act. It's always based on the women and what they want. Like make them know this, make them understand. As a man, you have to learn to have a problem with a woman's uh, wealth. You have to learn through experience that if she's wealthy, she's going to act a goddamn fool. Now, I remember years ago when I didn't live in the city in which I live now, but I was living in uh, another city in the same country, and they were really, really, really backwards better ones. Niggas ain't got nothing on a 200% better one. Actually, the better ones are the epitome of niggardom. They just have a little oil money. They had a few years saved up from welfare to not have the same issues. But let me go ahead and explain this to you. I remember uh, one guy who, he was a, pharma, a former pharmacist working for the Ministry of Health, and uh, he was supposed to be smarter than this, smarter than what he was, but he really wasn't that smart. So this dude said, uh, when, he, when they were trying to convince me to marry, but they wanted me to marry pretty much only maids, housemaids, I had learned hypergamy from women. And so I said, hell, knuck and foe. I don't do housemaids. I got a master's. I'm a teacher. I don't do housemaids. If, in order for me to consider a housemaid, she has to have an education, which means she had to hide it from you or you would not have hired her. So stop trying to pawn me off on your maids. What is so wrong with me that if I get a, a, a degree, I'm supposed to sit here and deal with nothing but housemaids? But you niggas get to chase after women um, who are educated. You niggas get to sit up here, pretty much say, I want to marry a teacher because they make a nice salary. Oh, y'all didn't know Arabs got down like that? Oh boy, you'd be shocked. So, uh, 
So for all of you that love to, especially for all the sisters that love to say that every other man except the black man has his stuff together, no, let me tell you, they don't. It's just that the ones that don't aren't the ones that go to your country, that's all. No, no, them niggas get down the same way, for the most part. So anyway, to make a long story short, um, when we had this conversation, he said, marry a poor woman, and I said, why? Would she marry a poor man? And he said, of course not, but a poor woman will listen to you. And I said, well, what about a woman that's in the middle? Well, they don't listen very well. I said to him, don't you think that's a problem with the women, not a problem with me? That's her doggone fault she don't listen. That means if you're telling me that, that a woman's income is going to determine that she can't listen to a man, you're telling me that, that women are flawed. Not because they're human, but because they're women. That's what you're saying. He told me they are. And he said something in Arabic I didn't understand, but now I understand that what he was saying was that they come from a bent rib. You can't straighten them out or you'll just break them. You just have to be patient with them. I knew from experience dealing with Western women, but not with women in his part of the world, that when you are patient with them, you pay for it. You wind up wishing you had not been patient. So um, I listened and I never forgot the conversation. But the whole point of this was that at every stage it was about what the women want and what they don't want, what they're gonna tolerate and what they're not gonna tolerate. They're the ones who have the issues, not us. And always remind women of this. Never let them forget it and don't let them convince you of anything else. If they say, well, I couldn't keep my man because he likes strippers, you need to say to her, always be ready to flip it back on him. If you're going to engage, then you need to go prepared. You need to be at home thinking of what you're going to say to everything they're going to come back with later on. Write it down and remember it. Practice it. If you're going to engage. Now, not everybody can do this. I've always said, pass porta bots, leave loudly and proudly. There are going to be those who, for whom it is better to just quietly leave. That's fine. Don't engage, just fit the guck out. But if you're one of those that, like me, you, you like to just, you like to go ahead and pretty much just tell niggas they wrong if you've looked at the situation long enough to be sure that they're wrong, then be sure to do it in such a way that they can walk off still believing what they believed, but they can't necessarily win the argument. You say to them, it's always about what y'all wanted. For a, spe for a gender saying that they have no power within the species, it has always been about what you wanted. Your power, is over, your power that you do have over men actually a lot of times goes through your fathers and your brothers. Your dads love you to death. Your fathers love you to death. Your fathers will betray the gender in order to make sure that you don't have to deal with poverty in order to get married. Even though poverty is, is something that can happen and will happen to anybody, especially to the righteous. Fathers are doing this. I mean, think about it. If you got your father of a girl, you wanted to marry a poor man, you don't care what kind of man he is. The fact that he's poor would make a lot of you say, nope, uh-uh, uh-uh, my baby deserves better than that. If she's still your baby, how is she able to get married? You can't have it both ways. She can't be your baby, but she's old enough to get married because the guy's rich. If she's, if she's a baby, she's a baby. Why is she getting married? You wouldn't talk about your sons like this even when you love your sons. And so at the end of the day, one of the things that we men are going to have to do is we're going to have to change the way that we father and not necessarily how we father our sons. We're going to have to change the way that we father our sons and our daughters too. Now I've always said, I said before, that if we parents, especially Muslims, would raise their sons and their daughters both with the understanding and the expectation that there will come a time when they become somebody's spouses, that we can prevent a lot of these problems. I have always said this. However, lately on this channel, since I've opened up the Black Heart channel, or started it, um, I have said it a lot less ever since about two years ago, largely because I'd already said it, but then also I've said it a lot less because frankly, at the end of the day, we're not really, um, we're not walking around here spoiling our sons to the same extent that we spoil our daughters. We're not telling our sons that they're, uh, you know, we always tell our sons, oh, marriage life is about a complete life and you've got all this responsibility and everything else. We generally done that if we tell our sons anything at all. Now, 
the single mothers may not tell this to their sons, but we fathers, we usually do tell this to the sons. We don't tell the daughters what their responsibilities are to the husband. I mean, think about it. If your daughter cheats, I mean, I'm talking to some of you dads out there. If your daughter cheats on her husband and you know the husband's a good husband, you going and he decides to leave her, you going to let your daughter move back in the house with you? Or are you going to tell her, no, 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 you get out there and stay out there by yourself. You had a good man, you cheated on him. You screwed this up, not him. It didn't just not work out, no. You pushed him away with another dude. How many of us would do this? Most of us wouldn't do it, not even for money. I mean, you, you couldn't pay a lot of fathers to tell their daughters, hell no, you stay the hell out this house now because you cheated on them. Do you understand now how we have screwed up? So we got to change the way we're fathering our daughters and we also got to be ready. If we're going to engage, we need to be ready to engage in such a way that the women now cannot be, uh, win the debate. Whether she was spoiled because her, daughter, her dad gave her a sense of entitlement or whether she got it from a single mom, it doesn't matter which one. You got to be able to win the debate um, in such a way that they can't, they can keep their position, Assalamu alaikum, sir, but they can't necessarily defend it. This is, it's very important, it's very crucial. It's got to be done this way. Because in all honesty, as you know, and as I know, um, it's not easy to change a woman's opinion or uh, her position. But when they can't defend it, you make it a lot more difficult for them to transmit that to the next generation. Because they still having babies. Ain't enough of us pulling out the system to where they ain't having no babies at all, period. No. But they still kicking, they still spitting out sons and daughters. And apparently the abortion rate showed that they're really spitting out a hell of a lot of daughters. Because when they do have abortions, according to the last statistic I heard, they're more likely to get rid of a boy than they are to get rid of a daughter. I hope that this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.